Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Today is that. Today is Monday, May 3rd. It is Talent Talk today. I am Jurgen, and with me also is... Hey, Vina. I'm here. Hey. What's up? <laughs> hey. So, you know what? Oh, gosh. I just looked at myself. I look like I'm ready to hit the links. I, I've, I'm feeling it. Are you I'm, talking about barbecue? Yes, oh, no. I'm, I'm ready to slam those in the belly. <laughs> <laughs> you do look like you are ready to go. I was going to say go clubbing. I mean, yes. <laughs> well, in a manner of speaking, yes. But no, we've got a, uh, what Talent Talk is, is we always uh, are trying to bring you things that are relevant to real estate. And on Mondays, we invite a guest along with us to further explore some aspects of real estate and try to, if you've got any questions, get those answered to you, get you comfortable and understanding what's going on. And we have a guest with us today that we'll introduce in a moment. Today's topic is going to be on, what is today's topic going to be on today, Davina? It's, we're talking about investing. Ooh. Ooh. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Pat. Pat. <laughs> Good morning Good Donna. Morning, Donna. <laughs> We have a <laughs> someone who is not only talks about investing because investing for a lot of people is really super scary. It not everybody understands how to do it, getting the right mindset and having the right expectations. We have a guest who not only is an investor themselves, but is uh, leading a group that is there as a resource as well as being a, an agent as well. So. Absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of people actually get into real estate because of the opportunities in investing. So um, this this topic is, you know, if you're in real estate already or if you're not in real estate and you're looking to, you know, get some ins and outs and maybe some secrets about investing. Today is your day. And we have a trivia question also. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. Ah, what is that trivia question? It is how many renter occupied households are there in the United States? Oh, that's what the U.S. stands for. OK, good, good. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, spelled it out for you. OK. Is it 30 million, 27 million, 15 million or 44 million? Hmm. A, B, C, or D. How many renter occupied units or homes are there in the United States? Hmm. All right. So what you need to do is take your very best guess, put your answer in the comments, and then we will find out who is our winner. Well, hopefully we'll find out who is a winner. But Thanks either way, so you're a winner. You're a winner for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, should we uh, should we introduce our guest because this is what? going to be a topic that can go a, a lot of ways. Yeah. So Let's this. Uh, <laughs> who we got with us today? He is a a real estate broker, uh, actually within the uh, the John L. Scott Olympia office. But just as important as that, in the big uh, grand scheme of things, he's actually a real estate investor. He owns. Uh, 16 properties, uh, self-manages those. He also helps to lead a uh, the multifamily and more Olympia chapter. It actually is meeting really soon. And you know what? I'm really excited to get the conversation started. So with no further ado, why do we not introduce Mr. Jake Diatley? Here we go. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? How's it going this morning? Hey, good morning, Jake. Good morning, Jake. You know? I'm just going to cut you off. To be here. Okay, that's fine. Happy <laughs> face. No, I'm playing. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing fantastic this Monday morning. How are you guys doing? It's it's brilliant. It's eight twenty one in the morning, and I am full of sunshine. There we go. I love it. You're always bringing the energy, Jurgen. He he is, and I'm just waiting for the sunshine to peek through the clouds. That's that's all I'm doing right now. So, 
But love it that you are here, Jake. Thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, real estate investing. Nice. Well, you know, starting off, and Donna just said hello as well. All right. So the reason this subject kind of came up is first, we know that uh, you're an investor is one of the reasons why you're passionate inside of real estate. But you also, uh, you're not just sitting on the sidelines and just bringing this all in yourself and uh, being concerned with what it means to you. You're actually out there and bringing it forward into other people. As a matter of fact, you're leading a group. We see the sign right behind you, Multifamily and More, a national networking organization, and there's an Olympia chapter. What is Multifamily and More? Yeah, Jurgen. Uh, well, Multifamily and More, uh, really, I, I try to take an abundance mindset when it comes to investing because there's just not enough investors as there is. So I try not to be competitive when it comes to other investors. So really with this network, it's about bringing investors together. Uh, to you know, be resources for each other, to hopefully work on deals together, to um, you know, say, hey, there's a deal over in your market. It's not for me, but it might be for you. Um, and Multifamily and More, it's a, it's a network. It's a national network that got started in Michigan. Uh, there's over 20 chapters now across the country. Wow. And um, I got connected with the guys there and just felt like it was uh, you know, a really great fit for uh, the resources and the value that they were adding to me to help me bring in some organization and some structure. Just uh, was really valuable. And I, I saw a lot of um, I just saw the value in, in bringing them on board. But uh, really, Multifamily and More, we're all about giving more, uh, being more and doing more. So, uh, and then, we, you know, that's just kind of the high level, but yeah. You just said more, more, more. <laughs> yeah, we really lean into the more aspect. We lean into the more aspect. It's not all, it's not just about, you know, the multifamily is in the name. Uh, and we try to cater a little bit to the small to medium sized multifamily to bring some higher level investors in that, that want to step up into like purpose built uh, multifamily. Like I'm trying to get there as well. I'm not there yet. Um, but, uh, but we also cater to all the other investors and, and also talk about mindset and, um, and uh, mentality and just try to up level you in, in all aspects of your life. Okay. So just wrapping the, the brain around the concept of multifamily and more and, and, and in the name. So you are just to recap, you are, it's a group of investors and you guys really support and lean on each other. Um, what is what does that really mean? Uh, you know, are, are you able to pull together resources? Are you, you know, ha you know, is it is it a, a financing thing? Like, what is the advantage of working together with with a group? And when you're saying multifamily, you know, or small or large, what is, you know, I know I have a couple of questions in here, but sure, expand on that just a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, about being resources for each other. That's you know, we, we compile. Uh, uh, lists of referrals. So we, we, you know, got contractors that we utilize within our group uh, that allows us to, um, you know, maybe maybe negotiate better rates and uh, and just having, you know, a deep list of, of people and resources and then um, just being able to push each other. Sometimes uh, it could be scary, like you said, to jump into real estate investing. It can be, uh, you know, it could be a lot of money sometimes it can be time sometimes there can be some amount of risk but if you prepare yourself and when you surround yourself with like-minded people that maybe are a step or two ahead of you um it just that reassurance and, and talking to them and them kind of helping uh qualm some of your fears uh can really go a long ways in just allowing you to kind of step up into who you who you can be ultimately yeah. And I don't know if I missed, I think I only no. to answer that. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, you, okay. you did. You expanded on that. Um, I think the only other um, part was on the multifamily side. So like your, is it, it, so it's, it is the larger investments um, it, more so, or what does that mean? Kind of. Um, I would say that, you know, for me, I've, I've owned a, a handful of single family and uh, small multifamilies, you know, duplexes, uh, things like that. And some of them are grouped up into kind of uh, larger, you know, on a single parcel, multiple properties. But um, so you could call it a larger multifamily property, but it ultimately consists of smaller multifamily. Um, and I'm really trying, I personally want to break into the purpose built apartments. Um, but there's also, it's not just about the multifamily as far as the larger stuff. We, we bring in plenty of people that have, you know, just single family rentals, um, people that 
haven't even jumped into it. There's there's people that are interested in flipping and other aspects of real estate. And and I also own uh, short-term rentals. I have some Airbnbs. And so I talk about those. Mm -hmm. uh, so ultimately, what I've found is that when you, when you kind of keep it really surface level and it's just like, oh, we're real estate investors and that's it, you kind of, if you just stick with the with the kind of base level information, which is great. And we do talk about that, um, but you can find a lot of that stuff online nowadays. There's a lot of great resources and we're trying to encourage people that have been in the industry, been an investor for a longer period of time to kind of come back in and, and network with people so that we can get value from people that are in uh, some of the larger space as well. Um, so we're just, we're trying to be inclusive with, with some people that have been in it for a while and also people that are really eager to jump in and, and make investing a, significant part of their life. If you're newer, you're still going to get a ton of value coming to this group. Nice. And you mentioned, uh, you said purpose built. And for someone who doesn't understand that term, what was, what is purpose built? Um, so there's, there could be efficiency gained in having one roof with, you know, 16 or 24 units under one roof with one boiler and, you know, four walls rather than, you know, when I first got into real estate, um, looking at properties that have some, maybe some deferred maintenance have, have been retrofitted. Uh, some of that stuff can take a little bit more work than, than you maybe realize on the onset. There's just more maintenance involved and um, additional costs. Uh, but and I've also found that getting into the slightly larger multifamily, it's a little bit more of a tight knit circle and it can be difficult to break into that if you don't know that commercial broker that's doing most of the deals in the area or that don't have a tight property manager that you're that, that you can work with or what have you so uh, this network just allows like like i was saying allows people that maybe have some investment experience but haven't jumped into larger deals to come together with those people that have those larger deals and maybe they're maybe they're you kind of get into retirement age and, and then that's when you find opportunities for people to come together and work together. Yeah. You know what? You started to say 16 to 24 under one roof. So under one roof, 16, 24. And I was hoping you were just going to say people. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, you know, you mentioned like when you first got in now, Jake, it, everything is relative comparative to me. You're not that old. I mean, you've really gotten a start. Like how old are you? I'm 29. I'm hanging on to that. I'm hanging on to that last year of my 20s right now. Yeah. <laughs> and did I did I get it right that you have you have 16 doors, properties, doors. 16 yeah. doors that you self manage, and you had you started uh, this. What actually got you start? Like at 29, that is a lot of people are still finding themselves, and still uh, some are still looking for even that first job. What is it like? What got you started? When did you actually start uh, investing? And what got, what was the trigger for you? What got you engaged? Um, I would say I got really serious uh, or got interested in in early 2017. Um, I had a a pretty decent job. I was starting to make more money and uh, saving money. I've, I've just generally been a frugal person throughout my life. And I just started realizing, okay, I've got this this small nest egg of funds. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to, um, you know, make my money work for me ultimately? That's not how I was talking to myself then. But um, and then I got a hold of I don't know if I found it myself or someone recommended it to me, but I would say half the investors I've talked to, the catalyst for them was a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, um, which is just a mindset book around money and and how you should, like I said, make your money work for you rather than and you'll pay yourself first. Um, is a is a big concept there where you know determine how much how many funds or how much funds out of your paycheck you want to put toward investing first and then work with the rest and um, kind of having that mindset shift uh, quickly made me realize that I didn't want to necessarily work for the man quote unquote until I was you know sixty five <laughs> I want I wanted to be able to create some time freedom for myself and I felt like real estate was the safest um, and most effective way to do so. Awesome. You're so funny. You're like, work for the man. like, I don't want to work for the man. I want to be a man, you know? <laughs> you man. Yes, no, exactly. <laughs> so that, you know, that's really good. Um, in that, um, one of the things that in, in investment, a lot of the common words are, you know, you want cash flow, you want like 
it, you know, income that you want to make money while you're sleeping, you know, talking about retirement and not, not looking forward to just social security and retiring at 65 or, or 70. And, and then what, right? This, this is the, and then what, as you're living into this, this is so great. Um, what are, so getting started. So you said, okay, well, you know, you started in, it hasn't been that long, like 2017. What was, what was like the hardest thing for you to, to do to actually get moving ahead? And, and now 16 doors <laughs> later, can you take us on that journey? Yeah. Yeah. I'll say that um, it, it certainly, I'm, I'm thinking back to middle of 2017 when I felt like I had educated myself enough. I'd watched enough YouTube videos that I uh, wanted to commit and really start looking for a property. And, and I originally wanted to find a, a small multifamily, which is two to four units. And, and that's what I was hunting for. And I wanted to do what's called a house hack, which is you live on one side and then you rent out the other side. And then that hopefully that rental income mostly covers or covers your mortgage. And so that was my goal. And I was also looking for something I could do cosmetic rehab on to try to force some equity into. Um, but there's, there wasn't and still isn't a ton of small sing, uh, multifamily that's circulating uh, in Thurston County. Um, and there, there's certainly opportunities, but I, I ended up coming across a single family home that had four bedrooms in it and two bathrooms. And uh, we felt like that was a good opportunity. It was priced right. And then we were able to negotiate down uh, back in this was the beginning of 2018. Now you could actually negotiate a little bit as a buyer. <laughs> and so we got, we, we were able to save a little bit of money and, and we got into, you know, it was almost 2000 square foot house right in the heart of Tumwater for $220,000, which right now sounds like can't find anything. <laughs> I'll take you. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, so, so really what um, I'd really been, thinking about this a lot and wanting to do this. But I think what really helped me was bringing on a business partner too, um, which ended up being my brother uh, who, who is uh, two years older than me. So um, I was really on this investment bug and thought it was the right path forward. And I, I talked him into, I, I gave him the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and talked him into to reading it. And he was committed after that too. So that book is a little bit dangerous, so be careful. Um, but. Um, yeah, so then I think kind of teaming up with him made me feel more comfortable doing it. I wasn't, you know, going in alone. Um, and, you know, we picked a home that was structurally great, but needed cosmetic work. So we didn't kind of, we didn't, uh, 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 we didn't over, overextend ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and we spent a couple months fixing it up, fixing it up. And then, um, and then I moved in with, with some previous friends that I was renting with before. And so filled in the other three rooms with uh, roommates that, you know, covered the mortgage. And I've actually got a little video about uh, how all those numbers work out on my Facebook page too. Um, but then, uh, yeah, so kind of the rest is history. We worked on the place for two months. We knocked out a couple of non-load bearing walls, we put flooring in, paint, new trim, new light fixtures, new hardware, all across the board. And then we got a refinance uh, beginning of last year. And we could probably refinance it again this year now with with how much more appreciation. So we cashed out and we got all of our initial funds back out. So our three and a half percent down payment, our rehab funds, plus another ten or fifteen thousand dollars that we were able to pull out. And then essentially it's called the Burr method as buying, rehabbing, renting, refinancing, and then repeating with those same funds. So you just kind of gotta get that initial nest egg and then you can just kind of keep keep rolling with it if you if you stick with it. Yeah. So that's so, how I got started, and that's how I got uh, the initial funds rolling, and, and yeah. Yeah, so uh, essentially what you're saying is it's a system, and you got started. It's amazing how many people can get started on side hustles or new, uh, new career paths starting through YouTube. But oftentimes, YouTube will only take you so far, and... Uh, that's where probably there's some huge value. Like how, how much more comfortable might it, might you have been if you had a resource at that time, like multifamily and more, like how does that help fill in some of the gaps or how for someone who's really thinking about this, maybe they are on YouTube right now looking at things. How does that local resource really help? Totally. Yeah. So I would say that 
you know, there's generic information online that can really get you in the right direction. But as you as you kind of level up and or even as you as you acquire properties um, and you're looking at specific scenarios that are very hyper specific to our market or to your property specifically, um, having having a group of people that you can bounce specific ideas off of is, is all the difference. Right. Um, and, and actually, there was a uh, networking group at the time that I was a part of that. Um, that we actually, it was it was on meetup.com, which is a website for networking. And, you know, you can put a group of board game players together or joggers or network, you know, business networkers. So we had a real estate investment group on there and um, and it kind of got it got hammered in 2020, like most meetups did and uh, went dormant. And, and I actually took over that group on meetup.com and then rebranded it to multifamily and more and then expanded onto Facebook, which is going to be our primary landing spot going forward. Nice. So yeah. you, you firmly believe in uh, what you're doing here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've been involved in, in uh, real estate networks for, for a few years now and I, I definitely see the value in it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That, that is, that is really good. And, and, and again, you know, being able to put together resources, like what I'm hearing the, the, the comment, the thread that you have been um, is from the beginning is partnership. Like you don't have to do this, alone. Right. And also you don't have to bite off. I mean, don't bite off more than you can chew either, you know, and be practical and prepare. Like with, there's all these P's like practical, prepare, partnership. Like I'm like, puh, 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 puh. <laughs> there's gotta oh be some God. kind of acronym. we can right? put together, right? <laughs> and, and as you're talking about the resources, you, know, you talked about, you know, the book, the rich dad, poor dad, you talked about, um, you know, the things that you've learned from YouTube, like, you know, as you're studying in the craft. And there is also um, another resource that you've mentioned before called Bigger Pockets. Uh, you want to mention what what is Bigger Pockets? Yeah, I would say that's kind of the, the next resource I found after uh, reading the book Rich Dad Poor Dad and along with YouTube. Um, it's a it's originally founded as a podcast. They they uh, got over 450 episodes now, I think, where every week they interview uh, different real estate investors around the area. And just after you hear 40 or 50 episodes of, of different investors that sound just like you and I and haven't really done anything different throughout their life other than kind of start to take action, um, you know, it, it kind of uh, normalizes the activity a little bit more. And so... Uh, and then also kind of a cool aspect of it as well as one of the hosts was from Grace Harbor, Washington. Uh, he started out investing in Aberdeen. And so there was a, a disproportionate amount of guests from the Pacific Northwest area, uh, which also helped. And, um, and yeah, it's just a, it's just a great place to, to hear a lot of anecdotal evidence and, and hear people talk about their mistakes so that you can learn from their mistakes and not repeat them yourself. Uh, Cause you're going to make enough of your own mistakes throughout the process as is. Uh, but you know, that's just part of the, part of the journey. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, and then beyond the, beyond the podcast, they've got a, a website with, with a forum and, um, and you can post questions and just interact with other investors on there. So another, again, another place where you can meet like-minded people. Nice. You know, as you were going through that, you you're gathering information, you're getting your resources together, you were coming up with a plan and you you wanted to insulate, not insulate, but you wanted to um, go about it in a really intelligent way. So you ended up uh, partnering up with your brother and you guys have uh, gone forward and you started to live into. I'm going to at least term it this way for you. Like you're living into at least a level of success. I'm sure your goals are stretching higher along the way and definitely want to ask you about that in a moment. But when you guys did that, you actually created a, uh, a partnership together and names often hold significance. And I don't know, I didn't uh, kind of prep you on this one, but Sitka Proper Ventures, does that have some meaning to you or what is that? It's not it's not super profound or anything necessarily, um, but we were we were kind of leaning into the uh, Sitka spruce, like the evergreen tree um, oh. in the area. And so it's just kind of uh, symbolizes, uh, you know, the general Pacific Northwest that we're from. And, um, and yeah, so that's kind of 
uh, that's kind of where we pulled it from. A lot of people ask about Sitka, Alaska, which is, uh, uh, unfortunately, there's no ties, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the roots don't run that far? No, not quite, no. Nice. Oh gosh, that's funny. Well, um, you know, so for you, you know, kind of if, if you're looking at, you know, the way that you started um, and, you know, someone else that might be really interested in getting into um, the investment arena, um, you know, I, one of the questions that comes to mind is, you know, do you, you, you you're a real estate broker and you're an investor, you know, the, the investor came first and then you became the real estate broker. How, how is being a real estate broker has, how has that helped or how has that kind of tied things in? Cause there's, there are programs out there that say, no, you don't need to be an agent. And then there's some that say, yeah, you should be an agent. Can you speak on that a little bit on yeah. the, yeah, the licensing and how that's helped? Totally. I would say as a real estate investor, you definitely do not need to have your license. Um, it's a nice, it's an, a nice additive. You can, especially if you don't have a, a great uh, broker that's just willing to, you know, it can be more difficult to work with certain investors just because maybe they're pickier um, with certain things or uh, it's just tough to find good deals right now in general. Um, but uh, it's, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. What, what Can you repeat the question again? <laughs> it's about me. being a real estate agent. And oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so there's there's definitely a value to it, but I wouldn't do it unless you're going to commit to being a broker you know, a hundred percent because it's just, it's, it, it's time intensive and it's expensive to be a real estate broker. And if you just want to do it to buy one or two deals a year for yourself, um, it's, it's just not, I wouldn't say it's worth it. Um, uh, plus if you're just not in the business, uh, as a real estate agent all the time, you're, I mean, you might save yourself a few percent on commission, but are you really saving yourself money when when you could work with a broker that's you know in it all the time and um, knows the people and, and can get you connected with good contractors and, and this and that so I would say you know some investors think oh yeah I'm definitely gonna get my license and, and that was initially my mindset and then I thought oh maybe I don't need it but then I thought I thought more about being an agent full-time and I decided yeah I think that that's I do want to do that and so if you go that route it, it does it does pair nicely but otherwise if you plan on maintaining a w2 job I, I generally don't think it's worth it yeah yeah that's actually Jake that is actually a really thoughtful answer on that yeah. question because a lot of times you're right people get fixated or uh, someone might get fixated on some dollars where if you're not engaged in real estate on in, in an active basis, you could cost yourself way more than the little bit of money that you uh, that you save based on not understanding the contracts and negotiations, having somebody that's really out there. That that was actually a really good answer mm -hmm. like that. Thank you, you know, when when thinking about it, I mean, you've been at this for a bit. You've made the commitment to do this. You've got uh, the, the venture, the partnership uh, in place. You did step into real estate as a, as an agent. And my goodness, I mean, you still are a young man. <laughs> what, what are your goals going forward? Like when you think about uh, the investment aspect and then maybe wrapping the real estate into it as well, what are some of your goals going into the future? Yeah. Um, well, I would like to be financially independent by 35, which means I could be living off of the cash flow from my rental properties by then. Um, I'm, I'm not there yet by any means, but uh, my goal is hopefully to, to three to five X our current portfolio by then. That's what we want to do. That's good. Yeah. And should I even ask if you've got a plan on how to do it? <laughs> well, part of it is, uh, part of it is, is getting this uh, meetup going and just connecting with more people that are in the space. Um, you know, I feel like, what was that? Doing? It's a secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. Like I said, from the onset, I try not to, I try not to keep too many secrets. I, <laughs> I, I've, I've tried to convince so many people to that investing in real estate is the way to go and, and had, and, and only a very small percentage of people even, even really take it a second thought. So, uh, I think there's plenty of, plenty of, uh, opportunity out there for the people that decide to take it seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. 
That's good. And you know what, Jake, and, and with that same thread of, of your goals and, and when what you do, it really is a, not just about you and getting to your goals, you're helping other people get to their goals and you are building relationships and you are helping people with their financial futures. And that is really, I think, you know, that's why your license and being the licensed broker has really helped in that aspect because now you're able to help people with access and not just yourself, but the the, the investors that you're working with and, and, um, and helping them with gaining the knowledge. So really the full service investor, um, experience comes when people are able to, to partner with a broker like you to be able to do that. So that's awesome. Um, I, okay. So, Hey, I want to be a part of multifamily and more. I mean, like if someone's saying that, you know what, Hey, I am, I am curious. I'm interested. Like what, what is the next step? How do they connect? Yeah, totally. Um, and be before I jump into that though, I do, I do just want to say that like my, my whole goal in this role is to be a connector for people. Um, I want to I want to give more value than I take back from the group. Of course, I, I do hope that I'll receive value from an expect to as I have in the past. But um, I want to I my really if, if I was just trying to uh, get deals from this, it probably I'd probably burn out because it's, it's been more work than I was expecting even already. Um, but I, I really get a ton of self-fulfillment around seeing people, you know, achieve achieve goals in real estate investing. And um, and that's just really a ton of personal satisfaction that, that I get. Um, but if people hey, are Jake, just yeah. real quick, uh, in line with what you're saying there, just want to compliment you that, you know, your heart and mission through the conversation here and uh, through uh, personally knowing you really shine through on that, that you're one of the most genuine people that, you know, that I've had the uh, privilege to know. So I appreciate that, Jurgen. I, yeah. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, but yeah, so people are interested. Um, we're on meetup.com, which we've got close to 450 members on there. And then with the Facebook group, that's really where I'd like to push people if possible, because uh, that's where there's more discussion happening and, and engagement. Um, and we've got a little over 70 members. It's only two weeks old. So we're trying to we're trying to continue to grow that. Um, but it's if you search uh, Olympia Washington hyphen multifamily and more, you should see it pop up. And uh, our first in-person meeting is going to be on the lovely John L. Scott rooftop deck on May 27th, which is the fourth Thursday of this month. Uh, at 6 p.m. So I really hope to see uh, folks out there and, and hopefully we'll catch a good sunset too. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know, if they, if anybody's interested, I mean, do they need to know anything or is this pretty much, if you just got a track, if somebody was listening to this here and they were just kind of attracted to the idea, any, anything they need to know ahead of time or. Not so much. I mean, if, if you show up and uh, start talking to people and just, just, you know, are there to absorb and, and learn, you'll start to, I think you'll start to kind of figure out the path slowly, but surely. Um, but of course, you can, you can hop on YouTube and start, start searching away uh, house hacking or burr or, or look up bigger pockets and, and start going down the rabbit hole. If you'd like, um, that's, that's definitely recommended for sure. Very good. Awesome. Oh, and this has been so good. So good. Thank you, Jake. And, and, um, and, you know, as Jurgen gave you that, compliment and you know i was the thing that i was thinking about at the same time was the zig ziglar quote like if you help um you know if you focus on if you help people get what they want in life then you'll have what you want i probably just messed that up completely but you know anything you want in life yes enough people get what they want absolutely so yeah i definitely believe that for sure yeah so well thank you guys so much it's been a lot of fun Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And we are looking forward to just watching you grow and get to your goals. And you said 35. So let just hang in there. It's, it's <laughs> going to come up real quick. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, we have a trivia question, though, um, that we mentioned at the beginning. And let's pop that up real quick. It's how many rental occupied or renter occupied households are there in the United States? And I think there were some some guesses, I'm sure. 30 million, 27 million, 15 million, or 44 million? <laughs> Pat says D, 44 million. Donna says A. 
Charles Chuck says 44 million. All right. So D Jared, do you want to pop in and give us the answer to the question? Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jared. Jared is a man of few words. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the answer is drum roll please <laughs> 44 million there are almost 44 million renter occupied homes in the united states in contrast to the 75 million owner occupied homes and that's from the nmhc so yep. wow jake so. you had you had a comment on on that did that number i don't know the number seem high or low or I wouldn't have been surprised to see it even a little bit higher than that, but uh, it, it definitely, it, it jives. Yeah. It jives. All right. We got it from the expert. It, it, the number <laughs> jives. <laughs> it jives. It jives. <laughs> oh, man. So, all right. Well, um, we can all stay there. I think, do we have any updates before we close out? It is, it's 8.52, so we're still within our time. And I don't know, Jake, if, you are, if you're good to hang out to the end. Um, or how your how your schedule is. You're good. Sure. Yeah. All right. I'm here. <laughs> I mean, we have our business meeting on Wednesday, uh, and we have a guest. Who's our guest on Wednesday? We have our guest Rachel from our luxury homes. Our exceptional homes is going to be joining us on Wednesday as a guest for our business meeting. So yeah. we're excited to have her on to talk about the marketing and. Um, the amazing resources that we have within our um, luxury marketing department of John L. Scott. Yeah. Through the, uh, through the week, we're uh, continuing on our ramp course uh, with uh, partnered up with, uh, with Workman success, which has been phenomenal. And then we've got on Friday, we have our forms Friday with Steve Chung. It's part two of the, uh, purchase and sale contract. We had some revisions. So this is the foundation, the backbone, the bones of all the contracts that we write. So understanding this is really important and the revisions and changes that occurred. And then earlier and that happens at nine o'clock and you're uh, free to tune in. If you're in real estate, it's a really great class. And then we have part two of what we do with Talent Talk for the week, which is uh, our talent market update. And that's where we kind of dig into the numbers of what's going on within the areas and try to give you a better understanding of what's happening with the housing around you and how you might be able to compete and just a little bit of news that you can use as well. Absolutely. And we do have our elite meet with our team and we have a special guest that'll be joining us just for them as well. So we, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good week, packed week. And, you know, remember what is Wednesday? It is the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo. Yes. And actually, you know what, of all things too, we're going to find out how the counties are doing later today. So we're going to find out if anybody has, uh, hopefully, Hopefully, we're going to buck the trend and counties are going to stay at least at the positions that they're at. But it seems like a couple counties may be moving backwards and that, you know, we just uh, we just pray for the businesses out there when they're impacted, because there's a lot. This isn't easy on anybody. Right. Just the, the unknown of of the, the ups and, and moving back. And I think it's going to be announced tomorrow. I know I think they're doing it today, but is the announcement coming tomorrow? From my understanding or oh, I don't know. Yeah. So I guess I guess we'll we'll see. But yeah, there's been speculation on like there was speculation that like some of the counties like we're gonna move back and then it's saying, oh no, but they might stay. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen? So well, we will later. We will. So yeah. all right. Well, it is time for us to get on with our day. It is getting close to nine o'clock. And before we do that, we, and Jake, you, you know what we do, right? Not just here on Talent Talk, but in our business yeah. meetings, just as we meet, when we, before we go, we always have a couple of words that we say that mean a lot, you know, yeah. and um, any, any insight on what the, these two words mean to you, Jake? You know, I think it's, it's, just it definitely aligns with real estate investing. It's just kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and and you know finding your full potential. So um, no, it definitely resonates for sure. Yeah. All right, you want to count us down? 
Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Bebo. Bebo. <laughs> hey. Thanks Jake, for appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, Nina. Jared, appreciate you too. And yes. everybody out there, we just thank you for being with us. Yes. Have a great rest of your week. All right. Bye. Thank you guys.